All right, guys, so we have something a little different today, a little bit of a rarity uh, as far as your normal BMW goes. This is a 2008 135i. So this has a twin turbo N54, so 3.0. Um, this car is 80,000 miles on it. It has a few problems. So starting off, it has the red brake light on the dash. It has an oil leak and it has a cool leak. So between those three problems, it's definitely a recipe for disaster, so we're gonna get taken care of. First of all, uh, I just backed off the trailer. Just by doing that, I could tell something's going on with the brakes. Uh, you can see it has the cheap brake pad, uh, black brake dust over the front wheels. The brakes are real grabby, especially when they're cold. That tells me somebody has really cheap organic pads on it, and they could be getting wore down. Uh, we really don't know. The owner doesn't know. He just bought this car. He had a brake inspection done. I don't know by who, but that doesn't really mean anything. We still got to check it all out. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and just check everything out real quick. I can see already that there's some white residue around in here. There's even some down here on the accumulator. And I just had it running, but just for a second, so we should be able to open it up. So it's been using coolant and it's been using more and more and more coolant. I don't know what that's off of. We'll have to figure that out. It's only ran about 30 seconds just enough to back it off. Ew. Ew. That's not good. I don't even see the coolant down in there. Doesn't smell like exhaust. This does have a little different setup because this turbo has a <clears throat> oil cooler that bolts onto the side of the oil filter housing. Now it gave me the oil filter housing gasket. I have to see if the oil cooler housing gasket's in there, but you can see somebody's been in there before. It looks like the gasket's kind of pinched and squeezed out right here on the corner. So we're gonna see what kind of gaskets he has us here and see what's going on but we definitely need to figure this out uh, and get that taken care of because that's not gonna that's not gonna work out very long uh, his wife's been driving it you know a lot of people have the radio on not looking at the gauge next thing you know it's in the red and next thing you know you know come to Nathan's house to get the the block redrilled so we don't have to do any of that while everything's still up and running we're going to get this taken care of okay so all he's given us is only the gasket where this bolts to the block he did not give us the gasket which is probably going to need also um, if the gasket is still soft i can't tell if that seal it looks just like a blue gasket but it looks like it's squished so we're just not gonna be able to tell until we pull it apart first step i'm pulling this apart we're going to go ahead and pull this guy here off we're going to pull uh probably go ahead and pull this guy here off a lot of guys saying to get the actual filter housing off to do this gasket. I'll try to get it out of the sun. Uh, you have to take the whole intake manifold off. That's just what people say. So we're going to go ahead and get the tripod set up. We're going to go ahead and snap this stuff off. And we'll have to pull the coolant lines at the bottom of this. There's a 6 millimeter, 8 millimeter, I don't remember which. The holes, the metal lines on the bottom. Once we get that separated, there's three Torx bolts. There's one here. There's one there, and there's one underneath the coolant line, and we should at least be able to get that off, maybe, hopefully by then, see exactly what's leaking. But we can see oil, like oily spatter on the hose there. We can see some oil down there. We can see some oil pulled up right there. We just don't know what this car has been gone through. We don't know anything about it. Uh, so we're just going in the blind. We're going to go and fix this problem. We'll probably do a second video on the brakes. He did not give me brake pads for it. I'm hoping we might be able to get some ceramics at O'Reilly's. I don't know how many millions of dollars it went for that, but uh, I don't think he wants to to wait on it. This may come back at a later date uh, to get the brakes done. All right, so hopefully this windsock blocks all the wind out I have on the mic, hopefully. Uh, so what we're gonna start off doing here, we're gonna just kind of put this guy over here out of the way. We're just gonna rip this off and it's definitely, uh, Definitely has some oil leaks. Let me go ahead and stop this. I'm gonna put some gloves on. The trouble I find is when I go to the MRE videos, my hands are all black, it doesn't look good. All right, so we got a microfiber here. 
We're gonna go ahead and grab this and pull this thing off. I don't know if that comes out that way or if we gotta pull the whole unit out. So I gotta pull the whole unit out. So there is on the front of here, there's some star screws. We'll have to pull it. Somebody's already got half of them out. And uh, you know, that's a T15 or T20. We'll go and get that. We'll pull that out. We're going to pull this whole assembly out and just try to figure out what exactly is leaking down here. It looks, there's oil up really high and that makes me kind of wonder what's going on here. Okay, so all we've done here, make sure the camera's recording. We just pulled, there's supposed to be four screws in the front and they are Torx fit and they are T20s. There was one missing, so we pulled the remaining three out. This is going to lift up out of the way. You can see all the oil, if you can see it or not, actually in the camera. Just covered in oil on the bottom of it. We'll give that a quick wipe off. And we'll set this off to the side. We never want to set any of this plastic stuff where you possibly could step on it. So we have our trash camera set up on top of there. And we can see this thing. It doesn't look like it's leaking next to the block, but it's really hard to tell. Um, probably gonna get my headlight and my little mirror on a stick, and we're gonna get down in there and take a look at it and see if we can't figure out what's going on exactly here. And we'll come back in a second. Okay, so what we've done here, we need to pull the fan out. Uh, there's stuff on the bottom we also need to look at. We also cannot see any coolant leaks, even though we see some white residue here and there. Um, when we jack the car up, there's coolant running out of the skid plate. I know it's a skid plate. It's being held on by about six bolts and it should have six, eight, at least 12, if not 14. So we're gonna go and pull it out here. One side had no bolts in it. And <clears throat> skid plates are notorious for blowing your engine up because just like in this case, it'll be leaking coolant over the place and it won't, drip on the ground when you're driving it'll drip out and that's exactly what the problem this thing was having hauled it on the car hauler on the way here there wasn't one drop anywhere on there apologize for the foghorn in the background um so anyway that's where we're at right now we have pieces of it looks like shredded belt no the hell is that if it is a belt, it's so broken down, but it doesn't feel like it is. It almost has to be. There's just tons and tons and tons of it. And you can see all the oil. You can see some coolant pulled up right in there. And there's coolant all back in here. It's hard to see on the camera. And it was oozing out of this hole that had punctured in it. And oozing out around just about everywhere, even all the way back to the passenger side. Now, this is my car. I'll discard of this because this is going to cause you some grief like you've never seen you want to be able to look on your car you want to be able to see what's going on you want to be able to look on your on your floor if you park it in the garage you want to see if there's anything starting so what we have at this point we have oil and coolant kind of thrown all around looks like it's been dripping on the belt and we need to inspect everything on this and see what's going on here okay so what we've done so far we just pulled the electric fan out that was a little interesting because there's a few problems with it. Somebody apparently has already been in here and they weren't too careful. Uh, you can already see that there's the bolts in the top cover. The vanity cover, you might say, is missing. Um, the fan itself, it's like somebody has broken it and put some Gorilla Glue on it. Actually sheared it all the way in two. The funny part about it is, is that the cooler, I believe this is tranny cooler, uh yeah it should be training cooler it's supposed to be screwed to that fan shroud it wasn't so it was down here thrashing around and it was actually you can see where it's hitting the pulley what was that power steering pump pulley it's going back and hitting one of the pulleys and actually ground a little notch in it so that's pretty scary anyway <laughs> Um, we're going to go ahead and pull out this guy here. I believe that is a six millimeter. That is a inverted torque. So E series socket, uh, our E series socket should be skinny enough to get in there. We're going to pull that off, pull the flange off. There's going to be two oil rings right in here. I don't think you can even see that or not. 
I put my glove in front of it, it makes the auto autofocus mess up. We're going to pull this six out. We're going to let this down. We're going to be careful not to lose our oil rings on each side. And then that'll let us get the engine oil cooler off. All right. So let's go ahead and get our sockets out here. Let's see if we have one that's going to fit this or not. We have our set of E-series sockets here. They work on most stuff, but some stuff they just they're too fat to get in there. Next size bigger. There's that one, and that is a E10. So maybe we could do this without having an extension on it. Turn the mic the right way here, that might help a little bit, huh? Let's just get down in here and let's try to break this thing loose. Careful not to slam your ratchet into the radiator. A lot of times these cars will come from different shops and the owner has, you know, he didn't know who worked on this thing, he just bought it. Um, Especially a lot of shops in the city. Well, I can't say that in the city or even down here. We live in the country and there's still Man, what a wrecking ball a lot of guys are um, Also to update you on that well, I'm taking this off on the camera I had in with the brake problem We had the shop that replaced both calipers and said replacing the uh, $19 $19 uh, Brake hose and it had those cheap ass AutoZone pads on or Riley's pads for 12 bucks. That's what the shop put on it. And you can see that they had been, uh, let's tap that off a little bit. And some oil running out. We're just going to have a little bit of that. There shouldn't be that much. We probably need to do is go ahead and, well, we don't know how far we're going to go. If we pull the filter out, it'll let everything run back down in there. You're still going to have a little bit up here. Let's just see how bad it is. No, it's not bad at all. Um, there's still oil ring stuck. <laughs> well, that might be the problem. There is no oil ring on the one on the right side. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to let this run down right there is pretty much done dripping already and there is absolutely no oil ring at all on this side so that's probably one reason it was leaking and it didn't fall off it's not on here and it's not in there we're just triple Triple and quadruple checking everything. I'm gonna wipe everything off here so you can see a little better. Yep, it's just missing. Kind of makes you wonder. All right, so we'll go ahead and wipe this off just a little bit down here. Get some of the oil out of there like that. And we have a huge assortment of oil rings. We'll probably go ahead and try to match one up. I'm gonna try maybe to put this up out of the way a little bit. At any rate, what I was saying about the Camry, um, the girl that owns it called back. She, she drove it for one whole day. Let's kind of put that back there. And those cheap ass brake pads ended up coming apart from the backing. And got caught between the rotor, not the rotor, the, well, the rotor and the uh, brake caliper holder bracket. And when I had it apart, you could see hairline cracks. She didn't really want to do anything with it. Usually they don't break apart, usually, but this time they did. So that's pretty much that. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this guy here off. There's three bolts. I think there's three bolts, let me verify that. Yeah, the bottom one's on a Torx. And looks like the bottom one's probably a, probably a 13, maybe. And we'll go and pull these off and we'll come back here in a second. Okay, so we have the two E12s out on top. We have the 13 on the bottom. Now, this could also be where we're mixing. We saw a little bit of, look like oily residue on the cap 
of the coolant tank. So let's just go ahead and gently pull this off because we don't have another gasket for this. We're going to make damn sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I just, you know, some people. <laughs> okay. So somebody's tried to reseal it. The gasket's still in there. Um, this is probably 100% for sure where we're mixing oil and coolant together. Now, we didn't notice anything on the dipstick, or actually the oil itself, we don't have a dipstick, but there's we didn't notice any at all in there. Even you can see right in here, the, the coolant's not mixed with the oil, but we're getting oily residue, like the starter of blowing head gasket. But this thing doesn't really have the problem looking here for the oil ring, it's just not there. So somebody's had this apart, that's fine. Um, but they use that stupid blue silicone from AutoZone that's for actually like a coolant or even uh, yeah I don't know even a coolant it doesn't work it just doesn't work uh, and you can see here how easy it comes off it's just not the right stuff so what we're gonna do we don't have any gasket for this that's okay we're gonna go and take our little piece of Brillo pad we're gonna clean this up we're gonna clean this up and dry all this off and we're gonna reseal that but before we do that we're gonna have to go down here and look and see if they did the same thing on the housing where it goes to the block because we do have a new gasket for that. Uh, we might go ahead and just replace that anyway. We'll see how entailed that turns out to be and see where we end up with it here. Okay, so where we're at right now, we just pulled the air box off. And by pulling the air box, mean, I mean there's the top cover just on snaps up here. You pull the filter out and the air box actually hooks on this little plastic stob right there. Uh, then it also goes down, it has a clamp, the hose going to it, it has a clamp, the hose going to it back there. That clamp was not, the hose is not even hooked up, so it wasn't boosting right. Whatever boost was pretty minimal. Um, so what we're going to do at this point, I think it's probably best just to go ahead and pull the housing off. Unfortunately, we're going to we're gonna have to go ahead and pull the intake manifold off, and we're going to have to pull all the cowling out and the plastic top cover. So let's go ahead and get started on that right now. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off with reaching in here, we're gonna pull out this cover without snapping it. That covers the brake reservoir. And while I think about it, while we're here, we're gonna go and check this fluid level because the brake light is on, the fluid level is full, okay? And then we have a eight millimeter bolt right there and the phone's ringing all right sorry about that the phone's ringing like always and we're gonna pull this eight millimeter out right here there's also another one up here and make sure you can even see it can you even see it kind of uh, there is whoops another one right here and there is another one right here and then we go on this other side. Maybe. Come on. There we go. And we're going to pull this cover out also. Be very gentle not to snap it. Oh, this has got that sensor. Sensor pulls out there. crap it on my hands there we go we're gonna pull that lid out keep your bolts over here separately if you can even hear me or not being that far away and we're gonna go ahead and pull out this bolt this bolt and I think at that point we should be free I probably need to do a whole separate video on taking this thing out it's hard to tag it right on Google with this bolt being the same video and then we have our cabin air filter 
which looks really dirty. Set that out of the way. And then if I remember right, take all this crap out of here. It's like a <laughs> it's like an old piece of a coolant hose. It's hard to say this thing. Hard to say. Anyway, uh, these wire looms, I believe they just pull down. If I remember right. Oh, well, probably help you take all the bolts out, first of all. And this thing should ever so gently lift up. There's tons of leaves in this car. I don't think there is any more in it. There we go. And there's also a sensor over here. Let's go ahead and remove that. Set that out of the way. And we should be pretty much freed up. We're gonna have to remove this wiring loom on the bottom. If I can remember even how to do it. All right, so how they come out, they just pull towards you. And we should be able to pick this whole thing up out of here. Trim on the bottom falling off. Set that guy completely out of the way. At this point in time, we get to the bolt. Cords all caught up and everything. Man, so it's like the first day I ever made a video. And then what we're doing here, we have a Allen bit back or a screw back here. And that's gonna take out the rear of the valve cover. The front two are already missing, so we don't have to worry about those. And that's how you pull the engine cover. Like I said, we're gonna do another video of it. At this point in time, we're gonna get in here, we're going to undo the bolts for the intake manifold, running across the top, I think there's 10 or 12. And we're gonna slip that back just a little bit. That's gonna allow us to get to this bolt right here, which you probably can't even see, right there. Uh, to remove that housing and to get it taken off. All right, so here we have the cover. So we have the two bolts in the front that were missing. You can even see that, probably not. There you go. This one and this one were missing. We have the centers, the oil cap. You do not have to remove it on this one like the other cars. We had to take out this bolt in the middle and the back. This bolt here was missing. Ordinarily, you had to take that one out too, but uh, so it only really had one bolt holding the whole cover in, which I guess, that's fine, whatever you're into. Set that back out of the way, we're not gonna step on it. And at this point in time, we're pretty much getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, we have a, break this out of here. There is a big hose down here, it has a clip. We may or may not have to pull that off. You just take a screwdriver in it, just like the um, coolant hoses. You pop the clip and pull that down. I think we might be able to not have to do that and we should just be able to take all the bolts, hold the manifold out, slip it back a little bit and get to our hidden bolt. Okay, so here's where we're at. We just took the nuts off the intake. There's one bolt here in the front and we just slipped it back. We slipped it back and now we could actually get down here to that bolt. We're going to take that one. We're going to take this one. And there's another one somewhere. I just can't remember. It's been so long since I've done this job. I try to remember, I remember most of it, but some stuff I forget. So I'm just like you. If I forget something or I'm unsure, you don't just do it anyway. You go ahead and just look it up. Take a few extra minutes and look it up. I remember now that the other bolt's right here. And I remember right, that should take it off. So we're going to go ahead and take that off and we'll come back. All right. Well, the wind started blowing about 90 miles an hour, big gust. So we're going to try to make the best of this and get this finished up. So. We just took the bolts out, we took the bolt on top, the bolt under the intake, and the bolt that comes in backwards right here. Make sure you can see that, you can. 
Um, I did pull the coolant line off. Usually I wouldn't do that. I cannot find my six millimeter wrench. Uh, so we had to use a socket. So ever so gently, by slightly wiggling, just gently work it out. If you yank on it, you're gonna snap it off. That being said, I think we're ready to lift her up here. And look at it, and somebody has had it off. So it's a good thing that we've uh, went this far with it. What we do need to do, we do need to pull this clip out of this hose. If I can find the screwdriver, which seems to be missing. I only have my, get this big nasty screwdriver around for taking the uh, bleed screws out of the coolant. So let's we'll use a corner of that. We'll pop the clip. And hopefully, yeah, comes right off. Come right off too easy. And by looking in here, it looks pretty pretty bad so we'll have to look in that hole we'll have to clean all that out make sure the o-ring is good uh, I don't have another one of those hoses here but I do have o-rings for it so we'll have to inspect all that and here is the housing so what we're gonna do we're gonna take some carb cleaner we're gonna clean this up we're gonna clean this guy here up you can see somebody has had gasket sealer on it or something that's probably definitely where we're getting a little bit of oil in the coolant at the coolant passage is some kind of sealer it's all broken down real bad so we're gonna go and clean the surface of the block clean this all up and take our brillo pad clean it all up real nice we're gonna put a new gasket on this and we'll take our finger just like we do every other time and smear a very thin layer of ultra gray on it and we'll bolt it back up okay so we have pulled the old gasket out and you can see it's actually starting to get eroded around the water jacket and we have the new gasket right here. We're gonna go ahead and drop it in. We've already cleaned our block off. We've already cleaned this guy out. And we're gonna go ahead and drop him in there. Like that. And you gotta make sure all the oil's off of everything on this. You gotta make sure all the oil's off of that. We took our Brillo and cleaned that up. And I think we're gonna go ahead and do a thin layer of Ultra Gray. It seems like if you don't do that, this thing will always freaking seep. And we hate stuff that seeps. If BMW would have probably just used a flat edge gasket and you seal it on from the factory, all of you guys probably wouldn't have to be doing this job. So I think we're going to have to do for today. Uh, we're kind of running out of time. have 10,000 other things to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put this back on. We're going to go ahead and put the intake manifold back on. That way we're all sealed off. We don't want anything to get down in our intake ports. And one thing I did not show, but we did do, we took our air compressor and we blew along the top of this to blow any dirt out. Because when you pull that back, you don't want anything falling down in your cylinders. So let's go ahead and put a little sealer on this. We'll go ahead and put that back on. All right, so let's go ahead and drop it in. And we're going to try to spin it here without touching any of that. Almost touched it. We're going to slide our bolt in our top. What we don't want to do, we don't want to have to move it around. Once we're on there, we just want to be able to leave it. And right away, this guy here needs to get over there a little bit. And ever so gently setting it down. And we'll just start a bolt to center it. And since our lower back bolt's a little harder to get to, we're going to go and start our bolt up here next. And one thing to be very careful of, guys, these bolts are aluminum, and the torque is very light on them. And I noticed when I took the one out, it was super tight. Uh, i venture to say somebody is trying to uh, torque it down big time, trying to get it to seal up. And if you do that, what's going to happen is you are going to snap it off in there. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like that too much at all. So I'm going to try to get this thing to change sides here. I'm at a weird angle. Put that down there like that. We're just to go through, we're going to snug it all up. Lower one is 
actually a different size. Figure out what I did with that. It is right here. The lower one is actually E12. We're going to go ahead and torque that down. We're going to snug it up and we're going to get the torque wrench out and do it right. Okay, so we're going to set the torque wrench at 14 foot pounds. Several people said that. Uh, let me see here. We have our 3 8 torque wrench here. So go to 15 and then back one. And uh, we're going to have to use an extension on the one bolt so we'll have to go a little tighter with it we'll get our e12 out on the bottom first all right there it is 14 foot pounds isn't a whole lot but uh still enough for you to watch out what you're doing and this we're gonna use extension on both of them We had to use a three inch extension, so let's just go one more. Put up about 16 and do that. And then on the other one, we're gonna have to use a long extension. So we're gonna have to, uh, I'll say go a couple more pounds. We're around 17, 18 pounds because we're using a 10 inch extension. Might be in 12. Alright, there. And we don't want to go any tighter than that. So, what we're going to do at this point, we need to call the owner. We need to see what he wants me to do with this cooler gasket and see if we're just going to put Ultra Gray on it, clean up Ultra Gray on it, seal it, or if he wants to go through and order the right gasket. It probably doesn't matter either way. It's kind of his preference. Uh, like I said, we do need to do that right now. We need to get this intake at least see to back down and we probably need to get the cow put back in uh it's possibly going to rain this evening later on and we don't want to have all this apart and it could possibly leak water down and get the engine if nothing else to get back here in the uh, in the cow we don't want that so let's go ahead and do that we'll be right back all right so here we are <clears throat> we went ahead and put the air box back in and we actually put the clamp on the boost line on the back this time it was just kind of laying off to the side of it and we went ahead and tightened up everything, get our hands on all the clamps, just kind of rechecked everything. We put our hose back in here, even though the holder's broke, so I guess it don't matter. Uh, we reassembled, torqued everything to 14 foot-pounds. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of the owner. Went ahead and put the little cooler back on for right now. We used Ultra Gray on it. It should be fine. It has a really nice gasket surface there. It should be no problem at all. Uh, so I think we're going to do it at this point. We need a couple things. We need to find an O-ring for this other side, first of all. That one's on there, that one's the one that's missing. I don't know, you know, you can see some oil spraying up here. I'm guessing that's what that was from. There was even oil pulled up on the top of this thing. So, uh, I'm not sure how distant, you know, run oil everywhere, but I don't know. We're gonna go and fix it right though. Uh, I think at this point in time, we're probably ready to put the engine cover back on. I went ahead and took each coil pack out, looked in each oil tube hole. There's no oil in anything, so I think that's fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and um, probably go and put the engine cover back on, and then we're gonna put the cowling back in. Uh, at that point in time, we'll put the hoses back on, which go under here, just one bolt, and then we're gonna drop the fan back in we can't really mess with the coolant problem. We just need to start up and see what's going on because everything is such a mess. I don't know if the coolant is dripping from here because it had that skid plate. It was run down all on the skid plate. You just don't know. Uh, probably put all back together. We need to get in, turn the key on, check the oil level before we can start it. Even though we didn't lose much, I don't know how low it was when it came here. There's many things we just don't know. Um, get it started up and see what we're going to have here. 
All right, so it's dark outside. We're just gonna show you here so we could uh, end the video for tonight. Uh, what's going on? We started back up, it was leaking from around these things. And they have a, this is actually a cap. Then it sits on a aluminum washer like so. So, both of them are leaking. This is a very odd size washer. I have that big box of copper washers here from Harbor Freight. I have all kinds of BMW washers. None of them are this size. They're either too big or too small or uh, the hole in the middle isn't big enough. It's pretty thin. So what we're going to do here, and you can see somebody's had this out. You can see the gouge in it. Maybe. Pretty hard. Asking a lot for the camera to focus like this. There you go. So you can see it right here. And once these are gouged, there's nothing you can do. It's just trash. Uh, BMW would recommend you replace these every time you take these off. I don't recommend you have to do that. But any kind of damage or especially any kind of dirt on the little seat right there. And it won't seal. You can see this one has oil inside of it. Same thing this is doing, which is putting oil down in here. So this car had many oil leaks. Um, we did, I'm trying to remember back if I took a video of it or not. We pulled this back off. This hose is fitting loose. We replaced the oil ring in there. This was dripping. Now it doesn't drip at all. So we fixed that. I'm still going to recommend they probably get another hose at the top of this. You can see it's getting kind of swelled up on the edge. And, uh, you know, it's got 80... 86,000 miles I looked earlier and you can see the lower hose it's getting a little discolored I don't know if you can see it or not it's a little bit of like a a rusty kind of color it's been on there for a little while so that's all for the video of the uh, BMW E88 uh, 135i uh, oil filter housing along with many other uh, DIY tips so thanks for watching guys see you later